This is part two to my reminder video on how I do the eye of partridge heel going from toe up. So on part one, I did the setup round, which was knit across my heel row until the last stitch. And I knitted through the last stitch through the back. And then I turned and slipped the stitch that came first and purled all the way across. So now I'm going to start the actual meat and potatoes, so to speak, of the pattern. And again, this is 64 stitch count for my sock. And I'm going to do this repeat 16 times. So I'm going to get my row counter so I don't lose place. And I may or may not get through all 16 rows on this reminder video. If I don't, I'll just stop and pick up where I leave off. So the repeat goes slip one, knit one to the last stitch, and then knit the last stitch through the back loop and then turn and then slip one and purl all the way across and just repeat that for me 16 times. And that will give me 16 to 18 uh, knit stitches here on the gusset when I build it up for me to knit into and pick up. Usually I pick up 16 with the extra stitch to reduce the hole between the front of the sock, the instep, and the gusset. But sometimes if I just happen to see a little bit too much spacing, I'll pick up an extra and I'll get 18 stitches. That just means I decrease one extra round uh, when I get to the decrease portion of the pattern. So here we go. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little. First round is just slip one, knit one, all the way to the very last stitch. Slip and knit. And this is going to be in real time. That way, when I go back to this to remind myself, I can just knit along with myself. And I won't feel rushed. Last stitch, knit through the back loop, turn, and pull that down so I can get in there. I'm going to slip this first, first one. Hopefully not split my yarn as I go with these higher, higher sharps.
Hmm. It's okay. What's up? Yeah. I'm going to put this down real quick. I'll be right back. Again, like I said, it's in real time. up this pearl row and then that was row one or round one I'll say not row one round one so now I'm going to start number two and I'm just clicking my stitch counter on my thumb and just redo rinse and repeat slip one knit one Slip one, knit one. I think my sheep grabbed my yarn. There we go. Last stitch, knit through the back loop, turn. And then slip the first stitch. I'm trying not to split the yarn. Slip that stitch and then purl all the way across. Zoom out just a bit so I don't have to worry about if my hands are in the camera. Okay, I'm going to resituate my hand.
was round two. Moving to round three. Slip one, knit one across. Knit through the back loop on the last stitch and then turn, slip, and purl all the way across. that row round I would say row that round is done let me go to four start that one again slip and knit to the end Knit side always seems like it goes faster than the purl side. Also doesn't help that I'm purling with such small needles, so it will go a little bit slower. But that's all right, it's not a race, it's just knitting. Okay. Knit through that back loop for the last one. Slip that first stitch and we just purl across this row. Finish up the round.
go to row five. Sorry, round five. Round five. Slip knit all the way across. Normally when I knit, I'm watching Netflix or Prime or something. But there's not that much on right now. So I'm just doing a repeat of Stranger Things currently. Good show, but they need to hurry up and show us the new seasons. But gotta wait until May, at least for the first half. I end up just having stuff on repeat in the background, or sometimes I'll just play records. Not that much on live TV anymore that I want to watch. Unfortunately, even though I pay for cable just for a few channels, Turner Classic Movie and some other channels. There's just not that much on. So I basically knit in quiet or with just background noise playing. Okay, this round is complete. Let's go to round six. When I do watch my little reminder videos, when I can't remember what I need to do and I want to see something visually, it's always nice that it's quiet and not noisy. I'm not a fan of loud, noisy knitting tutorials. I want it to be quiet. We're just knitting podcasts in general. I like it when they're kind of quiet. Quiet and relaxing after a long day of noise because of work. Plus when it's quiet, it's meditative. At least for me, or at least when it's somewhat quiet, even if I'm watching Stranger Things or Walking Dead, Wonder Years, Turner Classic Movies, Rear Window, something. It's still, even though there's noise, it's still quiet because I'm just knitting and knitting and knitting in a meditative state. That 
probably makes no sense, but it makes sense to me, so. It's all good. go to round seven and actually before I start round seven just to show you you can see what if you look at what you're making you can see all of your slipped and then your knit stitches the slipped ones pop out while the knits kind of fall in the background in the heel the back loop. Slip that first stitch and just remember easy peasy lemon squeezy. Purl all the way across. That's the great thing about the Eye of Partridge heel. Easy to remember, not a lot to it at all. It's just repetitive. Not to say that I don't like a complicated sock pattern. As long as it's written well, and it can actually be understood, but I don't mind a complicated heel or overall sock or any knitting pattern as long as it basically keeps my attention because there have been some patterns that I have said oh no this was a waste it's either written poorly there's too many errors or it just doesn't hold my attention which is no fault of the designer. It's just, I guess my attention span doesn't pick up on that particular pattern. And that's fine. Especially when they're free patterns. If they're paid for patterns, yeah, that's a different thing. Then I may have to just uh, figure out, maybe it's the yarn, maybe it's the day the week, the month, who knows. And I'll go back to it maybe at some point since I paid for the pattern, but free patterns I can just toss out. Go get another one. So that was round seven completed. Let's go to round eight.
nine. If there is anyone watching this, that was a grandfather clock, if it happened to pick up in the recording. I can be in meetings and people will question, where are you? Sounds like you're at a shipyard. I'm like, no. Construction site? No, I'm nowhere near any of those places. That's my grandfather clock. Then they start to question, why do you have a grandfather clock? Who has those anymore? I'm like, apparently I do, so mind your business. <laughs> I can like what I want and buy what I want and have what I want in my house. I'm not hurting you. Okay. That round is complete. Let's go to 10. Oops. Slip. Knit. Knit through the back loop on that last stitch. Turn. Slip that first and knit, I'm sorry, purl. Purl all the way across. Without splitting your yarn, if you can help it.
Let's go to round 11. Using a stitch. Okay. If you're afraid of losing stitches, like I just dropped that one because this back needle um, slipped out, definitely put in a uh, a lifeline and just a scrap piece of yarn or. Um, one of those barber, uh, that's the company that makes them barber, uh, the rubber or silicone, it's probably silicone, um, lifelines. Put one of those in there. Okay, that was 11. Let me triple check. I didn't, I don't remember clicking my uh, stitch marker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You don't count because you will be twelve. So I'm going to make you twelve by doing this. Slip and knit all the way across. Again, as I mentioned, which I think I mentioned in part one, um, if you lose count, like I just did, of um, whether or not you clicked your stitch counter or what row, what round, what round you're on, um, you can count your, basically it's a chain of knit stitches going up and down the side. Um, count the Vs count the knit stitches or put in those little uh I call them light bulb stitch markers or any stitch marker every time that you're done with a round put in a stitch marker that way you'll know how many rounds you've done so you don't lose track there's nothing like having too many or too little 
in the heel. Because you certainly don't want to rip and frog back. It's easier to add than rip it out and redo it. That's just, it's not difficult, but it can be a little bit of a annoyance sometimes if you've gone too far and need to reduce and go back. And of course, um, when I counted the 11 stitches before I started this 12th round, when I counted 11 on this side, it would be 11 over here. Of course, it's, it's identical. So just in case that ever popped in anyone's head or even if I questioned myself, it's identical on both sides. Putting this, there we go. Thirteen. I keep pulling on this just to anchor myself closer. That's all. And to clarify, anchor my finger, my pointer finger closer to my, my needles. It makes it easier to uh, hurry up and get through the purl stitches when I'm closer to the needle. Let's go to fourteen. And I think I'll go ahead and stop once I hit row sixteen. I didn't think it would go this quickly um, and then I'll come back tomorrow and work on this and 
do the heel turn, which is super quick. Well, not super quick, but it's quick enough. But that can be part three. And after the heel turn, I might continue into the gusset in the same reminder video. Um, but most likely, I'm thinking I'll probably end up doing the, the gusset pick up stitches portion in a, the following video instead, now that I think about it, just for time constraint. And then once I finish up the uh, gusset and get everything connected back together, so it's one giant uh, sock again, and put everything back on the one magic loop cable that I have, um, I'll just knit up to the cuff and then um, do a reminder video on how to do the cuff, or the cuff at least that I choose to do, which I'll probably just do a standard old uh, rib two, knit two, cuff. Um, I might try something different. Let's go to 15. But knowing me, I'm a creature of habit, so I'll probably just do knit two, rib two for the cuff. That was split, uh, slip knit, slip knit. And then show how I do the bind off. And I will do a stretchy bind off because I do not want that cuff suffocating my leg. Because I'm honestly not sure how tall these socks will end up being because as I mentioned previously I'm just gonna knit until there's no more striped yarn anymore I'm just gonna let it run out and then I'll knit the cuff probably for my normal 15 to 20 rounds. That's normally what I do for a cuff. Unless I want to get fancy and I just knit until there's no more color contrast and I have really tall cuffs. splitting that yarn. And then I'll have to think of another reminder video that I'll need that would help me out in the future. Or I could just do some quiet knitting recordings. If there is anyone watching, which I see that there's 88 subscribers, which is honestly crazy. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that I had a reminder video for myself. Um, something that I could understand and not have to go back and pause and start and pause and start over and over. I could just have it for myself and speak it the way that it makes sense to me and whatnot. 
Let's go to 16, and this is the last round for at least my pattern. If you're doing a larger sock, you would go up um, a few more rounds. But I didn't, going back to what I was saying, I did not think anyone would subscribe to my little reminder corner of the internet for knitting, however you want to call it. So if there's something that someone has questions on for knitting or would like me to test out and show, let me know. But I'll have to think of something that usually hangs me up or something that I need to have a reminder video on to make a new recording. Again, otherwise I may just record some quiet knitting moments. And actually I do have a shawl that I'm working on. I call it the Batwoman shawl, but that's not the name of it. Um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's called the Exponential Shawl. And that is created by, actually it doesn't say, oh no, here we go. Exponential Shawl is an original design by Louise Robert for Biscotti Yarns. And they have nice yarns as well, Biscotti Yarns. Um, but to me, it looks like, looks like wings inside of a shawl. So I call it my Batwoman shawl. I'm weird like that. If I find a pattern that catches my eye and my brain is like, oh, it's going to be called this. I just rename it what my brain tells me to rename it as. I do the same thing for yarn colors too. Someone could call this, I think, well, this one is called, uh, this is Raspberry Mocha, I think it was. I have the tag behind me so I can grab it so I'm not misspeaking it. But I don't see Raspberry in this, so I'm not sure what I would call this, but I've renamed yarn colors. At least that way I can remember what I'm looking for. If I put it down, I'm like, oh, I need to find the golden snitch yarn. And I know exactly what I'm looking for, especially because I don't keep the name tags, but once in a blue moon. And it's usually because I just haven't thrown away the tag yet. But then it makes it more personal, I think, at least for me, if I rename something it means more to me, but some things I just don't rename. Um, I have an Order of the Phoenix blanket, a Harry Potter blanket, and it literally has Order of the Phoenix knitted, the words are knitted in a circle throughout the entire blanket, so that I, I won't rename. That just, it looks exactly the way it's supposed to look, and I mean, heck, it has the name knitted into it, so. Anyway. To stop rambling, I have gone up 16 rows, sorry, 16 rounds, and this is the heel flap portion, and I'll come back and do the heel turn, which will make that triangular top, and then I'll do the gusset pickup. And again, I may pick up, well, actually I can look now and see. So looking at the chain or the side, whatever you want to call it, I'd be picking up, knowing me, I'll probably pick up right here along this edge right here versus in here, just to give myself a little bit more stability this hole is going to bug me. Let me just zoom in. So 
so that's gonna bug me oh wait i know why that's bugging me it's my tail so it does close up so never mind i won't have to worry about that um, but if that had not been a tail i would have fiddled with it once i do the uh, connection point but anyway let's see how many stitches will i be picking up one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen that was 14, 15, I have exactly 16. Now if I choose to, this is why I said I pick up anywhere between 16 and 18. Because even though this V right here isn't supposed to, supposed to be counted, I don't always like the gap that comes between the heel turn and the gusset up here. So I'll dig in here and this will be an extra stitch. So I've got my main 16, which is fine, but this one will become 18. And I say that because when I start down here, I'm gonna end up picking up an extra one. So it'll be a total of 16, which I have, 17, and then the 18. Or you could easily just say 16, 17, 18, however you wanna do it. Um, but I've got my main 16. I'm gonna pick up an extra stitch here in the gap to close the instep in the gusset. And I might pick up in here to make sure I don't get a gap between the heel turn and the gusset also. And to make sure that I have the same amount, which I should, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15 and that little guy is buried 16 because that's the loop on the needle so I do have my 16 here so I may not pick up up here sorry it's hard for me to see through um, the camera lens so since I have 16 here and this is right up on the needle. I may not get a gap on this side. I might, it just depends on what happens. I'll definitely put an extra stitch down here to close up the gusset in the instep to connect everything. Um, if it happens where I do 16 main pickup stitches and just one here, and I end up doing 18 total 16 main stitches, with this top extra one here and then definitely the extra one here that just means I'll reduce it somewhere um, it's easy it won't be noticed but that's just how I make sure that I don't have any holes in my heel because I don't feel like sewing them up when I'm done so I try to avoid that but 16 stitches sorry stitch 16 rounds um, have been knitted in the heel flap so you can go ahead and take a breather and I'll be back to do the heel turn <laughs> 